All right, today I thought I'd take some time and give you my review of this machine behind me, the ANET A8 3D printer. Had it about a month now. Uh, there's some things I like, some things I'm not crazy about, uh, and we'll get to them. So let's begin. First, apologize about the lighting figures. I put it in the spot that is the absolute worst place in my shop where I can get a good shot of this. But uh, too long, didn't want to watch it. General impressions, I like it. It's a nice and expensive machine that has performed pretty well for us. But uh, getting into it, I'll tell you some of the things that I do really like, but there are some things that I'm not too crazy about with this machine. Uh, number one thing, I'm not a 3D printer expert. I've never owned one before. I have nothing to compare it to. Our local library has um, Makerspace with a 3D printer, so the kids and I went and tested it out, and we thought it was cool, and so we started researching what it would take to get one here at home, and we soon found out that 3D printers are expensive, and you're talking low end, you know, four or $500, for a decent one up to thousands of dollars. Now there's exceptions to that there and there are continuing to be cheaper and cheaper machines out there but uh, I got very scientific and typed into Google cheap 3D printers and this one popped up. Did some more research and there's a community of people on Facebook and other places that help each other out answering questions and uh, giving information and trying to make this machine work as a more expensive machine. So uh, yeah overall thumbs up but with some caveats so uh, let's get into what I like first okay here we go here's my printer inside the cabinet which I built just to try and keep dust off of it down in my shop um, some of the things that I like about this machine number one it was cheap uh, I think I paid $148 from gearbest.com and that was shipped because I got it from the LA warehouse so I'm in the United States and got here in about 10 days now I've heard all kinds of other stories about getting it from the China warehouse and it takes forever and there's been custom problems but I can only share my experience which was a good one uh, it comes in pieces it was not difficult to put together it was a pain in the butt but uh, it took a long time but you could do it so if you're mechanically inclined at all you're gonna have zero problems putting this together um, I like how the main board has the SD card reader on it uh, it also has the USB connection so here you can see it's my little Nintendo that's a Raspberry Pi in there and I run Octoprint which I enjoy but that doesn't really come with the printer uh, but you can hook up a regular computer to it if you want to. Uh, it has a heated bed, which is nice. Um, and it works. The LCD is really easy to read. It has enough options on here that you can print without a computer if you put things on the SD card. Once I had this all put together, everything connected up, and I leveled the bed, it printed and it printed decently. There was some fine tuning that I did and you can see some modifications and I got a whole box more up here but it did a nice job. Again I am not a 3D printer expert but I was satisfied with the results. I, it never just failed on me. There was some... So spoiler alert here's one of my upcoming projects and a lot of you nerds will know exactly what this is without me even starting to put it together but um, I thought I'd show you some of these pieces to give you an idea of the print quality um, and these pieces are a good example because I have some nice ones and I have some kind of crummy ones uh, let's start with one of the nice ones this one here came out pretty good and I think it's because of the orientation and just the the build of the piece itself um, my bottom layer, you'll see some blue stuff, I, sometimes it peel the tape, I can't get the tape off real cleanly. Um, I do occasionally have problems with my first layer simply because I need to adjust the bed. So again, that's my fault, but this piece came out pretty nice, both the, uh, well I'm not going to say what parts those are in case you don't know yet, because this will probably be my next video. Um, 
But again, here's another piece. Uh, these attached to it. This is my first like big multi-piece build thing. So, uh, but then there's other ones where I've had some fit issues, like this one here. This is actually two parts, and I've had to cut away part of this to even get it to fit in there and it doesn't go in all the way so I still have to work on that piece but um, I don't think that's the model's fault I think that's just partly my fault and a little bit of the printer's fault too but still it's close so it's minor work there but some of these long tubes you can see I have a little bit of splitting here and the same thing with this piece um, that looks pretty nice, but up in here you see some splitting and cracking. Uh, so yeah, this is one that kind of bugged me. I almost wanted to make this one again, but I think once I uh, put some primer and paint on that, it'll look okay. Uh, but a lot of times the problem was mine where I didn't add support where I should have, like this piece. Um, up here, this printed like that and I did not add support here. So um, I cut away a lot of the extra stuff here that it had because it was just laying down a weird layer. And you can see these ribs aren't quite exactly how they're supposed to be. Um, they're thinner, these should be more square and flat on the ends. And in here that had a little trouble, but it still did pretty good. Um, you can see my top doesn't look bad. I do have some, this is a wobble in here, so. I need to check that out, but still, from far away, you're looking at it, you, and you print this the first time, you're going to be excited. You're going to be like, yeah, look at that. So, um, I guess as I do it more, I, I start to get a little pickier, but um, all these pieces are very usable. Uh, the one thing I've had, and it's not the machine again, it's Cura, the supports, like this piece. This piece printed with a lot of supports, and you can see how it's kind of white, and there's this jagged junk in here that's when I remove those supports and I've been having more and more trouble with that with Cura so I have to check out my settings on that to see because they should peel off real easy and, and pretty much leave no trace all right so I just put a um, little Marvin the Martian keychain in here and I'm gonna put the microphone down so you can hear uh, the noise Ooh, I got a little squeak there but um, for the most part it's a pretty quiet machine and when I put the cabinet door down I can barely hear it even when I'm working in the same room so here you go So there you can get a sense of it a little bit. Um, I put in some better bearings. Well, I don't know if they're better, but some quieter bearings. And so I don't hear those at all. Uh, most of the noise I hear is just the blower and then all the R2-D2 bloops and bleeps that the machine makes, which really, I don't know. Having the microphone that close may even be louder than what I hear standing next to it. The machine came with plenty of documentation and some video links so you could go and watch them put the machine together and you could look at the pictures between the two and I have videos up. It really wasn't that bad. Now on to some of the cons and I don't want to make it sound like I'm down on this because you just heard me say I would recommend getting it. Um, but there are some issues that some people may want to be aware of and number one thing is what I just said. If you're not a tinker, if you're looking to just pull something out of a box and set it on a counter and have it work, this is steer clear of this. This is not your machine. Because the bed leveling is not difficult, but it's fiddly. So getting this ready to print on um, takes a little bit of time and after every so many uh, prints you have to come back and give it a little quarter turn here or there and make it right again. 
Also, I've noticed that my bed is not completely flat, and I went and got a piece of glass. I just haven't put it on here yet, um, but it seems to be a common thing that you may not see it. You know, it's not real obvious, but the bed is not completely flat, and so the nozzle will be close enough over here, but maybe a little too high over here. So another thing to take into consideration. The frame, oh, putting it together, it creaks and cracks, and I'm afraid it's gonna break. It is not aluminum, it's an acrylic. Um, and I told you I had all these modifications made up, and I added this front brace and this belt tensioner and these things up here, and I have other things, like the cable chains I have printed and other modifications, and I'm just dreading putting it on because I do not want to move the frame around a ton and I don't want to take the frame apart at all because it's a pain and I'm afraid it's going to break. The biggest issue that I had was a safety issue. Um, in a previous video, and I'll put a link in the description, um, if, we if we could take a look at the side over here, it's where the power comes in from the power supply and I saw online there were all kinds of issues where it just wasn't working correctly. The board was melting, even catching on fire. So you can buy this little piece and, called a MOSFET and you hook it up or you could get a better power supply and hook it up and you'll be fine. Um, but you just got to be smart when you hook up the wires and while it's printing you got to pay attention. That's the other thing, and I don't think it's this machine. I think it's 3D printers in general. It's a pain to change the, the filament. You push down. Well, first you heat it, at least the way I do it. I heat up the machine. Once it gets up close to PLA temperatures, you push down on this thing, and you kind of give it a little push, and then pull it back out, and hopefully the nozzle's clean when you pull it out. And then you have to put the new color in, and... Man, there, it goes through a couple things while you're holding this thing down and you have to get it into a little teeny tiny hole that is like the exact same size as this filament and there's a lot of guesswork and it can be frustrating but again I think that's most 3D printers I don't think it's just this one but the filament holder which is up here now right behind baby Groot um, I printed some spool holder parabolic things in there uh, that's another thing it was it's just a threaded rod that went across the black acrylic and the spool just spun on it weird and it would jump and didn't seem to be working too well but once I put that other spool holder on and there's a lot of different versions on Thingiverse and other places where you can get it uh, but that was another downer you probably want to upgrade that at some point so yeah um, I've done some modifications to try and make it better, but I think I would if I would have just left it as the stock machine, I would get I would have been plenty happy with my prints. Uh, I'm one of those people that I like to tinker and do you know extra stuff just because I think it's fun. So I do have these modifications, and I'm going to be putting these chain things on all this stuff partly because I think it looks cool, and partly because I just I don't know maybe it will make things better. Um, but honestly, I think that if I would have just put the machine together, got that bed nice and leveled, maybe put a piece of glass on it, changed that MOSFET so that the power supply was fixed and, and safe, uh, you could leave it at that and be perfectly fine and happy, you know, as a dad with your kids just fooling around and making little trinkety stuff off of Thingiverse. I think it's a wonderful machine and a good choice. So there you go. Um... Thoughts, impressions of the machine, pretty positive. Uh, I think we're going. We already have gotten a lot of use out of this. Um, I'll probably put up a few videos of some of the future upgrades I have planned for this. Uh, plus, my daughter and I are having a fun time doing like the Maker Monday kind of thing, where we just pick something random off of Thingiverse and make it and share it with everyone. So, if you're looking to do stuff like that. Absolutely, I would say go for it. If you're looking to do some kind of production and doing, you know, all kinds of stuff that you're going to put on Etsy or for sale, this might not be the one for you. But 
for your weekend warrior type, I think this is a great machine. So two thumbs up. Uh, you can get it on gearbest.com, but I know they have it at other places. And I mean, it's it's basically a Prusa i3 knockoff. So you can they go by Geetech, they go by Tronxy. Um, there are either even other ANET models like the A6. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, and I don't know. There's other ones you can check it out, but um, the idea is pretty much the same. It's just it's a basic frame with the stepper motors moving everything around and getting your prints taken care of. So. If this video was helpful to you at all, I sure would appreciate it if you would like or maybe even subscribe. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments. I try to check and, and answer them when I can. Um, and if there's anything you would like to see in future videos with this, I, I didn't really mean for my channel to become a 3D printer channel, but you know, that's, that's the thing we're into right now. So I guess that's just how it goes, but um, there will be other types of more woodworking videos in the future but uh, yeah if you have one and you have any tips you'd like to share with me please let me know I'd appreciate it see ya